So we'll start the session in a few minutes. All right. Sure. Uh, yeah, in four minutes actually. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me load up the slide. Welcome everyone. So I'm just going to load up the slide. Um, if everyone can just leave the slide the way it is. Try not to move the slide from page to page, so that you don't miss out on on what we're doing. Uh, Dr. Shumboye, mm -hmm. before you start sharing the slides, I should let you mm -hmm. know that. Tell me. We would be sharing the introductory slide for our faculty. Okay. Okay. Yep. So we'll so do that. And after that, you can start sharing the slides from your end. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So I'll let you I'll let you do what you need to do then. So our faculty for today is Dr. Kenny Shumboye. He is currently working as a consultant rheumatologist. Leading on the vasculitis and advice, advice and guidance service, heavily involved in teaching and research. He is the principal investigator for several non commercial and commercial research studies and leading on the specialized commissioning services for vasculitis and connective tissue disease. And he's also the honorary senior lecturer of Leicester Medical School with an additional role as rheumatology undergraduate education at Lockley. He's a keen academician and has presented in several national and international conferences and has published his work in several national and international journals. Thank you. Thank you for the very kind introduction. It's um, always wonderful to be here with um, everyone. Hopefully um, a few more people will join in. But um, this session is, um, I like my sessions to be very interactive. So. Uh, feel free to to raise your hands if you have any questions or use the chat function to um, relate to me any questions you have so that we can um, get things started. So it's um, basic and clinical sciences that we're talking about today. It's a very popular one with the exams, especially for the part one exams. Um, I have sort of the slides have been prepared in a, in a way to make life easy for you. Um, so definitely get a pen and paper and take notes down because a lot of what we're going to talk about will be something that you're going to find very, very helpful. I always like to have an interactive session. So um, yeah, hopefully if I can have you guys sort of um, contributing to some of what we talk about that that would be great from time to time so that you can get the best out of this session uh, and you don't miss out on a lot of what we what we talk about. So without much ado, let's make a start. Uh, in which of the following disorders is alpha glucosidase deficiency found? So the way I do my sessions for those, for people that have attended the past, I always like my sessions to be interactive. So I want the first person to respond. I want to find who the top brain is for this session. I always like to find the top brain for any of my sessions. So whoever is the first to to type the answer in the chat, um, I'll, I'll take the total points and find who that is. Or you can unmute yourself and just um, tell us the answer. So which of the following disorders is alpha glucosidase deficiency found? Is it Anderson disease? Is it Van Gerk's disease? Is it Pompey's disease? Is it Corey's disease? Or is it Mercado's disease? So any answers from everyone? Anyone? Remember this, um, with this session, you are allowed to, to give a wrong answer. Don't be afraid to give a wrong answer so that we can make corrections as we go along. Because so hopefully the, the aim is that we improve on your knowledge of uh, basic and clinical sciences um, so that you can pass your exams with flying colors, which is what everyone wants. Okay, so the, the answer is Pompey's disease and it's a glycogen storage disorder uh, type two. Obviously, the when it comes to this particular, yeah, I think somebody has responded. Okay, so um, yep. So Aneban says um, option two. So Aneban, uh, thank you for responding. Uh, I like I said, I like uh, 
the sessions to be interactive. So I, I never, and it's not von Gerks in this case, it's actually Pompey's. It's just one of those things for the exams, you just have to cram it, which is why I've given you the other popular ones that, that usually come up. So apart from Pompey's disease, um, or, and what happens in Pompey's is, Pompey's is related to a deficiency in acid maltase. The other ones you can have that are glycogen storage diseases, uh, you have Curry's, or otherwise called Forbes disease, which the deficiency in that case is amylo 16 glucosis uh, glucosidase uh, deficiency. Or you can have Macardil's disease, which is a deficiency of myelophosphorylase. Uh, that could be the deficiency that you could have in um, Macardil's disease. Another deficiency that you could have uh, when you have deficiency of amylo 14 and 16 transglucosidase, you can get Anderson's disease. You just have to know. All, you have to just cram this page. So take a photo of this page, learn it. But this is a very, very popular one in the um, MRSP part one. Okay. And um, uh, Aneban, the one you chose, von Gerks. Von Gerks is actually caused by a deficiency of uh, glucose 6 phosphorylase. Uh, but that's the link at the bottom. So if you go to this website, rarediseases.org, uh, it will give you a lot of information about rare diseases. And it presents it in a very easy way that is easy to read. So this is the kind of information. Yes, yeah, somebody is, please can you not mess with the slides? Um, so this is the kind of information that um, you need prior to the exam. So go to the website, reddiseases.org and get all the information you need from this as soon as you can. That will be very useful in terms of your preparation for the exams overall. So next question, uh, which of the following is a feature of pseudo hyperparathyroidism? Uh, which of the following is a feature of pseudo hyperparathyroidism? So, is it um, low serum PTH? Is it an increased urinary phosphate and CAMP with uh, parathyroid hormone PTH infusion? Uh, C, is it shortened second and third metacarpal? Is it a low serum calcium and low serum phosphate? And is it a low serum calcium and high serum phosphate? So, what's the answer in this case? What's the answer in this case? Okay, I have somebody uh, that's gone into the chat. So Dr. Daz says E. Absolutely, Dr. Daz, you're absolutely right. It's E. It's low serum calcium and high serum phosphate. So essentially, pseudo hypoparathyroidism, what happens in pseudo hypoparathyroidism? It's like hypoparathyroidism. The difference is you don't have a low PTH, you actually have a high PTH. And the problem is, let me, sorry, let me get this out of the way so that you can see what I'm talking about. So the problem is you get a high um, PTH because there's lack of responsiveness to PTH. That's the difference between pseudo hyperparathyroidism and uh, hypoparathyroidism. So the biochemistry is sort of similar to what you get uh, with where, where you get raised phosphate levels, but the PTH is really elevated. That's the difference because there's resistance to PTH. You get a very, very high PTH from the get go which is where the problem lies in pseudo hyperparathyroidism. So the, if we go back to the previous answer, it is not a short second and third meta, metacarpal. What you get is actually a short fourth and fifth metacarpal. Um, so that's where that's option C is designed to trick you. You get a short fourth and fifth metacarpal, not second and third. So that was designed to obviously trick you. Uh, and there are other features that they get. Um, they get short stature and they have low uh, IQ, so um, their intelligence level is, is quite low. So these are the things you need to be aware of uh, in, in the context of um, your paces. These are the sort of questions that uh, they can play around with and uh, try and trick you with. So you need to be aware of um, these sort of questions. So should I have a prioritization? All, now, all the sons, let me see. Okay, as a tree. Okay, so the, the way to think about it is, um, because I can't draw on Zoom, Dr. Durang, I can't draw on Zoom, but this is the way to think about it. You have autosomal dominant disease, you have autosomal recessive, you have X-linked diseases. X-linked, the, the information I've given you here is very, very important for you to look at. Autosomal dominant diseases, once you have a defective chromosome, you get the disease. You don't need so whether you're homozygous or heterozygous, it doesn't matter. Once you have an abnormal chromosome, you get the disease. That's autosomal dominant. For autosomal recessive, you need two to be defective. So if it's 
if it's two chromosomes, you need both of them. You need a homozygous chromosome number to have disease. So can I use net to explain? Um, when you say can you use net, what do you mean? You can unmute yourself and, and talk and, and ask me the question. I don't understand what you mean by use net. Because I can't I can't draw, so I can't necessarily uh, hi Doc, good screen. afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, afternoon. How's yeah. it going? Yeah, good, good. Uh, and uh, I would say thanks a lot for, for the sensitivity and uh, specificity. Uh, you know, these good are stuff, yeah. questions and the way you explain, uh, boss, it goes right to the heart. So uh, when we sharing the screen, we had uh, one previous presentation. I'm sure the admin will know with the dermatology doctor who could go to the net and you know show the uh, explanation. It's easier because it's pictorial, as you know. Even if you tell, I know. Oh yeah, remember, yeah. But it's difficult to get in. It's the it's the best chance. Okay. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. So so what I'll do is as part of the take home for this, I will tell the admin to forward you that uh, that pictogram. I'll tell the admin to forward you the pictogram with, with explanations. I'll, I'll look into that for you. I'll, I'll make some tweaks on that slide and I'll tell the admin to send it to you. Is that okay? Sure, Doc, not a problem. Yeah, so Thank we'll you. do that for you instead. Um, yeah. yeah, because that, that image you talked about, because obviously I didn't give that particular talk. I, I don't know that particular image, but yes, there, there, there are definitely some useful images that would be helpful. But the way to really understand it is, is this. X-linked X conditions, because for you to be a, a boy, you need X, Y. So if your X is deficient, you get disease automatically. There's, y has no contribution. So if your X is deficient, you have disease. In the case of BMD, that's uh, Becker's muscular dystrophy, only half of the males will be affected. And the reason is for you to be, a male child needs one X from his mother but none from his father. X-linked conditions are carried by the mother, not by the fathers. Does that, does that make sense? The mothers carry it. The fathers either have the disease or don't. They, they're not carriers. They have the disease, full stop. Most likely ratio of a negative test. So what they're asking you here is a likelihood, negative likelihood ratio. Remember that apart from positive predictive value and negative predictive value and sensitivity and specificity, we also have positive likelihood ratio and negative likelihood ratio. The formula is simply this. So the formula is this. So for a positive likelihood ratio, the formula is sensitivity divided by one minus specificity. So you just reverse the terms, but likelihood ratio, negative likelihood ratio, it's one minus sensitivity divided by the specificity. Unfortunately, this is one of those that you just have to know it. You just have to know it. Uh, but that's the formula. So the answer ends up being 0.17, which is B. Yeah, so for um, likelihood, positive likelihood ratio, it's um, sensitivity divided by the one minus specificity. Back. Okay, so that's the formula for uh, positive likelihood ratio. You just have to Unfortunately, you just have to cram it and learn it. That's um, that's the way it goes, I'm afraid. Uh, but it's one of those things that you sh if you learn last minute, then um, yeah, you you're going to get the the answer right. You just need to learn it like last minute uh, and and nail it. Okay. So for for sensitivity, it's um, like I said for positive likelihood ratio. So positive LR. Uh, as you asked, so sensitivity, you just flip it around. So sensitivity divided by, actually it's, it's 100 actually, not, um, not one, it's 100 minus spec. So 100 minus spec, not one, but 100 minus spec gives you the, um, yeah. So it's 100, not one, 100 minus spec. So you just need to learn it last minute. Uh, and um, we're asked for, um, What's it called for the um, negative likelihood ratio? It's 100 minus sensitivity divided by spec. That's if you're given, if you're given as percentages, obviously you use one. If you're not given as percentages, you use 100. So it depends. Because you're given a ratio here, you use one. If you're not given a ratio, you use one. So if you look at the chat, 
the formula I gave you initially is for when you have percentages. When you don't have percentages, you use hundred. If you don't, if you have percentages, then you use um, um you use one. So, but we'll we'll look at how to to help you best with statistics. I know it can be a bit tricky. Um, yeah. So, in the interest of time, that is it. Any questions? Any questions? Ask me anything. Yes, yeah, so confidence intervals, um, the, the higher the interval, that's, that's, that's not really great because the interval is too large. You want a narrow confidence interval because remember, if they're too, if the inter confidence interval is too narrow, that's good. If it's too wide, then ah, there are too many elements in it. Yes, yeah, so the air, so that's a good question. So Daz is asking, can you please emphasize the areas we need to emphasize in basic medicine? So the areas we need to emphasize on are the receptors that we've just talked about, statistics, because it always comes out. So the formula I gave you for sensitivity, specificity, uh, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, likelihood ratio, know that like the back of your hands, that will always come out. So learn that. Those are easy marks. It will always, always come out. Learn that. Then your endocrinology is a, is a good one as well. Endocrinology, they love endocrinology to try and deceive you. Then glycogen storage diseases, you have to learn that as well. So, um, yeah, so the sort of lectures you're getting on fats is, is very, very helpful. Um, and if you have an Oxford handbook, that will be useful as well. If you can buy an Oxford handbook so you can quickly look at easy facts. Oxford handbook of medicine or Oxford handbook of uh, foundation year. That, that's a good one you can have as well. Oxford Handbook of Foundation Years, that's a very good one to have as well. Just to understand the basic application. Anything else? Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, because I know it's a bit late for you guys over there, so um, we, don't, we don't spend too long. Anything else? All right, I'm glad you liked the session, Darang. How about everyone else? Biswas, everyone else? Happy with session? Okay, Singhi is asking concept of uh, positive predictive value. So predictive value, that two by two table I showed you, the two by two table that I showed you, when it comes to predictive value, Singhi, it's all about positives. So the formula is TP divided by TP plus FP plus FP times 100. That's positive predictive value. True positive divided by true positive plus false positive times 100. That's positive predictive value. Negative predi the negative predictive value is all about negatives. So true negative divided by true negative plus false negative plus false negatives times 100. That's it. That's the easy way to remember it. Does that make sense, Dr. Thingy? Okay, good. Any other questions? That, that, those are easy ways to remember it. I, I mean, if I, if I remember any more mnemonics, I'll, I'll definitely make it available to you. But um, yeah, that's the that's easy way. Remember your type one error, the Messiah being killed, when it was actually the Messiah, that's a type one error. Rejecting the Messiah when it was actually real, that's a type one error. So don't commit to type one error. Don't reject the Messiah when it's true. Okay, so that's it. So thank you everyone. And um, in the interest of time, I know it's late Friday, I don't want to take your time too much, but I'm glad you enjoyed the session. Feed that back and I'll discuss with the faculty at FAS and see how best we can help you to create a session that you can enjoy. That's it. Thank you very much and um, enjoy your Friday.